السلام عليكم غير مفتوح السلام عليكم السلام عليكم الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إن الحمد لله نحمده تعالى ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كلام الله عز وجل وخير الهدي هدي محمد بن عبد الله عليه أفضل الصلوات وأتم تسليم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وبعد Indeed our praise is due to Allah We praise Him and we beseech Him And we seek His forgiveness And we repent to Him We seek refuge with Allah From the evilness of our own souls And the evilness of our actions Whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Has guided them There's no one to mislead them And whomever He has misled There's no guide for them I bear witness that there is no deity Worthy of worship except Allah he is one and doesn't have any partners as I bear witness that Muhammad ibn Abdullah is a servant who is not worshipped and his final messenger who is blindly followed. As for what follows, for indeed the most truthful of all speech, it is the book of Allah and the finest of guidance is the guidance of Muhammad ibn Abdullah and the worst of all affairs with Allah is novelties and newly introduced matters into the religion for verily every novelty and newly introduced affairs into the religion will lead to innovation and every innovation will lead to misguidance dalala and every dalala will lead to naru, the hellfire may Allah protect us and you from the fire Amin. last week we was talking about the ibar wal fadail the lessons and the virtues of Surah Al-Kahf of the chapter of the Quran entitled The Cave and we mentioned we summarizing the benefits from that story or from that chapter of the Quran it mentions four different stories because it's dealing with four different forms of fitting 
trials and tribulations, tribulations and tests that Allah caused all of mankind to be tested with. And we mentioned they were fitna to deen, being tested in your religion. Well, fitna to mal, being put to trial and test in your wealth. Number two. And we covered those two last week. We mentioned the fitna of the deen, having fitna in your deen, which is, this is the worst of the four. Have being put to trial in your religion. May Allah protect us from our deen being tested. We mentioned that in detail and we said the protection from it is tawadu. I mean, excuse me, we said the protection from the religion is suhbah, a saliha, having righteous companionship. Being with those individuals, ahsana min kadina, those who are better than you in the practice of their religion. Companioning people like that or who. So, so that it will benefit, just to protect you from fitna. And we mentioned also tazkiratu tazakur al akhirah, reflecting and pondering constantly over the hereafter by looking and investigating what's been legislated and revealed to us of the, what will take place yomu qiyamah on the day of judgment, learning and understanding the signs of the last hour, the minor al sughra wal kubra the minor signs and the major signs likewise learning and understanding what allah and his messenger has informed us of a jannah to nar of the paradise and the hellfire all of this bima'na to dhakrul akhirah all of this falls into the definition of reflecting of what hereafter because learning about this what some of the ulama have mentioned the highest level of ilm after you reach the lower levels, the highest level of ilm is ma'arifatu thawabul al-a'mal. Knowing the rewards for your deeds. While knowing, also knowing the punishment for your deeds. That this is the highest level because now you understand nata'ijul a'mal. What will your deeds result in? What will it bring about? These are the highest level of knowledge. Ma'arifatu awaqibu al-a'mal, knowing the end result of your deeds. What it what it can do happen to you if I do this? This what I will get. This the results it will provide for me. What will take place if I don't do this? Of punishments and chastisements, of nikam, of punishment and chastisement. Wa ghad wa sukhat. Of earning the wrath and anger of Allah. And knowing what the wrath of Allah and His anger. How does that achieved? Knowing all of these things is from reflecting over the hereafter. So in the story, and talking about the fitna of the deen and the story of the people of the calf is where all of this lies at. The reminders and also the solution, or the solution for the fitna in your deen. Likewise, we talked about fitna til mal, the trial of wealth. And the key component we mentioned, the isma, the protection last week from it, was us having fahmu sahiha. Having a proper understanding of the reality of this life. How is this life reality as Allah described in that surah and giving examples of what the beauties and the dormants and the comforts of this life reality is. And we talked about that last week. And Allah showed this is the protection. Is a, as we said, is fahmun sahih, fahmu haqiqat dunya understanding the true reality of this life and its proper place in your heart and in your lives so that we don't misappropriate it and also reflecting over the hereafter what will happen when we let the dunya pull us away from our purpose in life all of the here in each one of these narrations or four points you see connected to it to that al akhirah now we move on to the next two categories of what sort of to talk about and that is the two next two other fitting of the four which is fitna to ilm 
the trial of having knowledge. Yes, having knowledge comes with fitna. It comes with a trial. Likewise, fitna to sulta. The fitna of having power and authority and leadership. For the Quran came with ismatuhuma, with the protection from these two fitna. And in the first one, fitna to ilm was in the story of what happened between Musa and Khadir. Between Musa and Al Khadir. Yes, we know in English we say Kidr, but it's Khadir. What the fitna that took place between the two of them of what Musa was put to trial with that situation. In the story of Musa alayhi with Khadir, where he thought that he was the most knowledgeable of mankind on the earth. When he was questioned who was the most knowledgeable of the people of the earth, him being the only prophet at the time, he thought he was. And instead of returning knowledge back to Allah and saying, Allahu A'lam, Allah knows best, Futin, he was tested. And he said, instead of returning the affair, Yansibul Amr illallah, before he started returning the affair back to Allah, he praised himself and said, I am. He said, I am. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, awha lahu Allah. Allah it revealed and inspired to him that there is someone more knowledgeable than you. And Musa والسلام, was informed his name was Khadir and you will find him in such and such a place. And of course, the statement of Rasulullah the statement of the Messenger of Allah is applicable here. And that is, when he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Talabul ilm, Faridatun ala kulli muslimin wa muslimatin. That seeking knowledge is obligatory upon every male and female Muslim. Hakadha wa 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 amthal al nasi fi hadha al anbiya. And the most exemplified example you can find in these, this aspect of the deen in understanding this obligation are the prophets. So when Musa saw this, he grabbed his son, his, his student. Who became a prophet after him, Yusha. He took him, he was his servant, and they embarked on his long journey to go meet this man Khadir that Allah had informed him of. And when he went on that journey, he went just to learn. He spent his wealth, he spent his time, he spent his efforts to go learn. And we should benefit from that. What's going to perfect your hereafter and your dunya? We should be striving hard to do that, brothers and sisters in Islam. Striving hard to do that. That's the key component to our success. Learning. For it was Adam, alayhi salatu salam, when Allah created his creation and left him sitting there. And he didn't blow his spirit into him yet. Adam standing there and the angels see this new creation. The jinn see this new creation. And Allah Ta'ala says, Inni ja'ilun fil ardi khalifa. I'm a, really, I'm going to place on the earth a new vice generate, a new leader. When before El, the Bunni tribe of people and the jinn ran the earth. And they caused much mischief and spilled much blood. And Allah eradicated Bunni, those people, and he kept the jinn and put them on the outskirts as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had mentioned, as mentioned by Ibn Kathir in Bidayah wa Nihai. That he chased them to the outskirts of the earth because he's going to place new people on earth and when he decided that he was going to make this new creation the new inheritors of the earth, the angel said, fiha, you're going to place in the earth Man, yes, fiha, who spills blood, who, who cause mischief and spills dima, spill the blood of people. You see, do fill up, they cause corruption. Well, yes, we could dima, and they spill the blood of others. Allah says, Inni a'lamu ma la ta'lamu. I know what you don't know. Stay in your lane, stay in your place. And what did He do? He showed why human beings is above. Angels and the jinn. But it's only when we have these attributes. What was it? 
قال يا آدم أنبئهم بأسمائهم he had to show the angels why he's putting this vice general on the earth he said inform them of their names the angels where they were assigned to what they created to do what they've been commanded so if an angel is in charge over the sun he only knows what's connected to the sun he knows no other knowledge if he's in, in charge to take care of the, of the universe he only knows what's connected to the universe and nothing else so Allah taught Adam the names of Adam al Asma Akullaha. I taught Adam the names of everything, everything in his details. From then to Yom Qiyamah. From then to Yom Qiyamah. And Adam alayhi salatu was salam. Allah wanted to show him why he put him Ashraf al Khalq, the best of creation. It's not just from having blood, flesh, and being a human being, or as we say, free will. Ah. No, you're the best of creation because you have knowledge of Allah. Awal al ilm. Wa sharaf al ilm bi sharaf ma'lumi. The nobility of any knowledge is based off the information that that knowledge, the nobility of the information that it provides. And no information can be provided more better than the knowledge of who Allah is. Wa kullu ilm tabi'un li ilm Allah. Every knowledge is in following of knowing Allah. For in lam ta'rif Allah, la ta'rifu makana ayya ilm in ba'du. If you don't know the knowledge of Allah, you will never know the proper place of any other knowledge. Look at the world we live in. Science uses it to change a man's private part to a woman's, cosmetically, not reality. Or to change a woman's private part to a man. Then they say, this is a woman now. But she's still a man. Still, he's still a, a, a man. Knowledge that's misappropriated. Why? Because they don't have the greatest of knowledge. Knowledge of Allah. As one of the sellers said, people leave from the dunya have not tasted the best part of this dunya yet. Kiel said to him, what is that? What is the best of the dunya? He said, Ma'rifatullah. Knowing Allah. The ulama said if the people, the rulers and the people of wealth knew what we knew, they would pull out their swords and kill us for what we have. Of knowing who Allah is and the solace that is granted for the one who knows Allah and submits to Allah and connects to Allah. That's why Allah says, Inna ma yakhsha Allah min ibadihi ulama that the only ones who fear Allah from his servants are those who have knowledge of Allah. Aina anta min hadha ya muslimun. Ya layta qawmi ya'lamun. Where are you at in regards to this Muslims? Do you know Allah better than you know your dunya? Do you know Allah better than you know your job? Do you know Allah better than you know your worldly affairs? Do you know Allah better than you know sports? Do you know Allah better than you know whatever you love in this dunya? In Kana Haki the Hakikate Aya Awarun 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 Aleku. This is blameworthy. This is blameworthy. For the Muslim, what distinguishes him from the Kafir, Kafir, the non Muslim, is his knowledge of the hereafter. He knows what's going to happen when the angel takes his soul to he enters the Jannah. But you're just like a kafir when you don't know about your hereafter. You don't know about the akhirah. So Allah Ta'ala took Adam and put him above the rest of the creation because of his knowledge. And so the angel submitted and said, Ma alamtana illa but we don't know except Ma alamtana what you have taught us. We only know what you taught us. They submitted. So the first fitna of knowledge is to be deceived by that knowledge. Is to think that you're somebody because you have knowledge. Knowledge is not supposed to raise your arrogance. Knowledge is not supposed to raise you, make you feel you above others. Like people do when they get a doctorate and a PhD. Oh, call me doctor. Call me fulan. When none of the ulama of sunnah never say, I'm sheikh such and such. They say, I'm a small student of knowledge. Because knowledge is supposed to breed humility. And the isma that Musa learned in this story. Because he couldn't be patient. He couldn't be patient with Khadir. And what he has, he said, he said, how can you be patient? He said, he told him, 
teach me. He said, I don't think you can handle and be patient with what I have to present to you. Because there's no hubara. You have no experience in this area of knowledge whatsoever. So you can't relate to be patient. He said, Satajiduni insha'allahu sabiran wala asi laka amara. He said, You will find me. But in, by the will of Allah, patient with you to learn from you. And I will not disobey you in any affair. And he couldn't be patient. And then he taught him everything he saw and learned from him. He lost out learning way more because of his impatience. So this story teaches what? The key to protecting yourself from the fitna of knowledge is tawadu'a. Humbling yourself. I mean, being humble, being humble, and reflecting over the hereafter. Because when you reflect over the hereafter and in this circumstance, and you think you somebody, it doesn't mean when it's time to die, that brother will get a higher gender than you who has less knowledge. And you may get worse because what comes with knowledge is is a greater punishment from Allah if you oppose that knowledge that you know. Just like comes with being knowledgeable and practicing that knowledge. Greater rewards because of what you know from those who do not know and practice. So it's a double-edged sword. As the Salaf used to say, the one who have knowledge and don't practice, عَالِمٌ بِعِلْمِهِ لَيَعْمَلًا مُعَذَّبٌ مِنْ قِبْلِ أَهْلِ الْوَطَنِ The one who has knowledge and don't practice it will be punished in front of the idol worshippers in the hellfire. And what the messenger said, say, يُخْرُجِ أَقْتَابَهُ He will pull out his own intestines and it goes for over a mile and pull it all out of his own buttocks, his own intestines. He will make circumambulation around like he a crazy man, hurting himself and doing this. And the people of the hellfire will surround him and say, Why are you the one who used to command us with the good and forbid us from the evil? Now, Ajal, he said, Yes. He said, I used to command with the good, but I didn't approach it. And I used to prohibit the PR from the evil, but I approached it. So brothers and sisters in Islam, the protection from the fitna of knowledge is humbling yourself. As the Prophet said, Whoever humbles himself for Allah, Allah will raise that person. هذا وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين بسم الله والحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب الله تبارك وتعالى ويرضاه وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على أسوتنا وقدوتنا محمد بن عبد الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه. So the protection from the fitna of knowledge, brothers and sisters in Islam, is a tawadu, humbling yourself, وعدم الغرور بعلمك, and not being deceived with the knowledge you have, but rather knowledge make you feel even more worthless before the people, because knowledge is the thing. The more you gain, the more you realize how ignorant you are. Every time you increase in knowledge, the more you increase in knowing how ignorant you are. As Allah Ta'ala says about the human being, And when we offer this responsibility of the trust of carrying this religion to the heavens and the earth, والجبال, and to the mountains, and it refused to take on that responsibility of Islam. And it feared from it. Allah says mankind took on that responsibility of Islam and its charge. Verily mankind is extremely oppressive to himself. 
and jahul and extremely ignorant. And nothing raised you from being oppressive to yourself, and nothing raised you from being ignorant except knowledge that you learn as correct knowledge and you practice it. For that is the key. The third fit, the fourth fitna that this sorter teaches us is the fitna to sultah. The fitna of having power and authority over others. Whether that be the ruler of a country or the ruler over a business or a company or the mayor of a city or whatever the case may be in having authority comes with that fitna. And that is clarified in the story of Dhul Qarnayn. Dhul Qarnayn kana malikan adila. He was a great justful king. A man who yamtalikul ilm, who had a lot of knowledge. He possessed a lot of knowledge. وَيَنْتَقِلُوا مِنْ مَشْرِقِ الْأَرْضِ إِلَى مَغْرِبِهَا عَيْنُ النَّاسِ Who was a man who had the ability to travel from the east to the furthest west where Allah Ta'ala says he came to عَيْنٍ in Hamiatin. He came to a, a spring that had hot water. يعني Hamiatin إِمَّا مَعْنُوا عَيْنٍ حَارَّةٍ he came to a river bank where the sun sets, where he found a group of people there, and this, this river was the sun right, was, was set in this place where this river or this or the spring was either hot water or was black water because the nature of water when it sits for a long time it begins to turn black in its color. So he the somewhere this place somewhere where the sun set he went as far as there. Yadril Allah in calling the people to Allah. And spreading good, goodness amongst mankind, commanding with the good, prohibiting from evil. Till he came across a people that was afraid of the people called Yatjuj and Matjuj, as we call in English Gog and Magog. He came across these people who Kadu la yafkahuna kaula. People who could barely understand what's being said to them because they're so rough. That caused fitting. And they asked for his help and he helped them people and protected them from the harm by building a seddun, a barrier. Li him an whom to pre prevent them from harming those people. And this barrier still exists to this day. And only Allah knows where it's at. It exists to this day. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected the people from that. But in this story, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had informed us that the fitna of having power and authority is you be deceived by your own actions. And you begin to think what you're doing is a good thing. And Allah ta'ala warned us of that. He says, Qul, say to them Muhammad, Hal nunabbi'ukum bil akhsarina a'mala? Shall we not inform you of the most lost and ruined in deeds of mankind? Shall we not inform you of that? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says who they were in their description. <laughs> Those who their efforts that they put forth in the dunya has been lost. Meaning lost from Allah's pleasure. Lost from Allah's legislation. Lost from Allah's success and aid towards them. Those who have lost their efforts in the worldly life. They have lost their efforts in the worldly life. Wahum yahsaboon. And while they was in this state, they thought Annahum Yuhsinuna Sunna that they were doing good works. We was doing good works. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished these people. And this is what authority has comes with. You can be deceived, especially if you have Batana to sue. An evil entourage around you who see your wealth and see your power. Them the ones that incline towards the leaders. And when you got a, you a leader with Batana to sue, with bad companions, yani Ashabu Su, bad companions, bad people in authority, because it's only people who usually want dunya doing that. That that's a fitna. And here Allah is informing us that the isma from fitna to sulta who al ikhlasu. Lillahi fil a'mal is to be sincere to Allah in your actions and not do it to please the people, not do it to 
for worldly gain or for get the vote of the people or for any of those reasons. But to make your actions sincerely to Allah. And last but not least, what to dhakrul akhirah. And to reflect over the hereafter. And reflect over the hereafter. Constantly repeat in every four of these fittings. We have to remind ourselves, and nothing reminds you of the hereafter greater than the book of Allah. Then the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then the statements of the scholars. So us incumbent upon us that we understand this reality. And understand this fitin that Allah is reminding us of. Because the kufar, the leaders of the kufar, this is their reality. They lost their, their, themselves with their deeds. They're the most ruined of the people while they're thinking they're doing good. And they're causing corruption. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Kahf with an eye that focus on ismatun kamila, how to protect yourself in any fitting, in any trials and tribulations. And that is what reflecting over the hereafter all the time. As Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala said to Muhammad in the in last ayat of this surah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in ayah 110, the last ayat of Surah Takah, Qul say to the Muhammad, Innama ana basharun mithlukum yuha ilay. He says, say to them, I am only a human being like you, except that revelation was revealed to me. Except revelation was revealed to me. Annama ilahukum ilahum wahid. And truly, only your deity is one deity. فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ That whoever hopes to meet with his Lord فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا To let him do righteous deeds يَعْنِي عَلَى وَفْكِ الشَّرْعِ اللَّهِ Do let him do righteous deeds Meaning deeds that's in agreement with what's been legislated وَلَا يُمْكِنْ مَعْرِفَةُ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا إِلَّا بِطَلُبِ الْعِلْمِ شَرْعِ You cannot know what is beneficial knowledge or righteous deeds except by Learning this religion, learning what this knowledge of this religion is legislative knowledge. So Allah Ta'ala says, let this person who hopes to meet with his Lord, let him do righteous deeds. And let him not associate anyone as partners or anything as partners in the worship of his Lord whatsoever. Make your deeds sincere to Allah. For these ayats, Brothers and sisters in the side, clarifies for us the reality of this life and the hereafter. <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Do those who disbelieve, yani, ahasib, af, af, ahasib kafaru, yani, bi, lillah, yani. Do those who disbelieve in me, do they, and, and take, and take my worst servants, my slaves, they take my slaves as protectors and lords, less than me, Verily, I have prepared the Jahannam for the disbelievers in me as a home forever. As a home forever, Allah Ta'ala said. Dharika jaza'uhum Jahannam. For this is their recompense of Jahannam. Allah Ta'ala says, be man careful because of what they disbelieve. Listen carefully, brothers and sisters. And because they took my verses and my messengers as a joke. How? They didn't practice what was sent to them. They didn't learn what was sent to them. They didn't live by what was sent to them. So they took it as a joke. That's taken as a joke. So if you're not reading the Quran to learn how to save your own self from yourself, if you're not reading the Sunnah to learn how to save yourself from yourself, then you have taken the book of Allah and the, and the messengers as a joke. And then Allah, He tells you of this morning, He gives you some good. Verily, those who believe and do righteous deeds, 
كانت لهم جنات الفردوس نزلا Verily for them Verily this for them Gardens of Firdos As a home forever خالدين فيها A body there forever This ain't forever That next life is forever Allah says خالدين فيها أبدا لا يبغون عنها هيولا يعني تحولا And they have no desire when they get that forever bliss to exchange it for nothing else whatsoever. Then Allah ends with the ayah. Allah ends with the ayah that he ends with in Surah al -Kah. When the Prophet says, Satan, I'm nothing more than a human being like you. Revelation was revealed to me. This is our reality. And if you brothers and sisters ain't reading the Quran, you can't keep your mind in that reality. The Quran is the dhikr of Allah, it's a reminder of Allah. That can never be. Remind yourself with it. You ain't nobody. You can't protect yourself. You can't protect yourself. But only Allah can protect all of us. Why are we are negligent in our servitude to Allah? Because we think we can protect ourselves. Even your messenger knew he couldn't protect his own self, so he used to say, Ya Hayyun, Ya Qayyum, O ever living. Oh, he who provides existence for everything. Aslih li shatni kulla. I beg you to rectify for me all of my affairs. But I take in the NFC comfort and I ain't. Ever that do not lead me to the charge of myself for the period of time of the blinking of an eye. Ever. Not even for the moment, that's the shortest time period. Blinking of an eye. He asked Allah not to leave him in charge of himself for that. And we treat our deeds and our hereafter like we in control. الأمر كله لله قل إن الأمر كله لله الله says say Muhammad verily the affairs of this world and you all of it belong to Allah he said this after Allah that Kufa said to him or the ignorant one said to the messenger of Allah أليس هل لنا من الأمر من شيء do we have any control or say so in this affair of our creation this world we live in Allah says قل say to them and the affair all of it belongs to Allah when we gonna wake up and realize it? It ain't you. Your children going astray because you ain't turning to the one who can keep them straight. Oh, change of the heart, change our hearts to your deen. Oh, dispose of the heart, dispose of our hearts upon your obedience. رَبَّنَا لَا تُزِقْ قُلُوبَنَا بَعْدَ إِذْ هَدَيْتَنَا Oh, our Lord, please don't lead our hearts astray after you have guided us. And bestow upon us from near you mercy. Verily, you are the one who constantly bestows bounties. Oh, mercy. Well, who's your guy today? Mercy. Allahu Akbar, Allah.